Thank you. Um, I'm going to start this talk with a photo. Um, this is my mum and dad on their wedding day. And this photo was taken outside the town hall. Um, and I first learned about this photo when I was about 13, um, when I was going through a difficult phase with my mum. And she brought some photos out, and this was actually taken as part of a set of four from a photo booth, <laughs> because they had a very small wedding, they couldn't afford a photographer, they only had um, a couple of friends with them. And this is a set of four, and it was the only sort of documentary evidence of their marriage. And my mum wore a black and white spotted mini dress, and then this sort of launched her into a number of stories about herself, my family, and we had a very, very long conversation, probably one of the best conversations we'd had at that point when I was 13. Um, and the reason I'm showing you this photo is that this photo um, and this one, which is another one from our CEO, um, Nick, is of his grandmother. And this was in 1943. Um, and his grandmother was one of the land girls. And she was doing some uh, work on the land. And she was very proud of this photo. And again, um, Nick talks a lot about how when he was younger, he used to talk to her about the photos and the stories she had um, and wishes he'd done it a bit more. And in this photo, just after this photo was taken, a car drove into the ditch and it turned out to be a young man who'd been very taken by his grandmother. Um, and she told this story very fondly about being so beautiful that she caused a car crash. Um, and so this, th these um, photos we've shown, when we started talking to the team at History Pin at We Are What We Do, we started looking at the power of photos and storytelling as a combination. And I know Annie was talking about that earlier as well. Um, and We Are What We Do, the organisation that created History Pin, um, we're a behaviour change organisation. And we look at what can we build that have behaviours built into them, that have actions and things that can affect sort of social issues. Um, and with this, we really focused on intergenerational conversations and starting conversations and what could we create, uh, literally, what could we create to do that. And out of that sort of idea came History Pin. <laughs> so we created this project, we got some seed funding, and we built History Pin. Um, and this is the home page at the moment. Um, and I'm going to take you through a little bit about what History Pin is and what History Pin does. And then I'm going to show you some of the things we've used History Pin for within the community. Because my role is actually the community manager, so it's about taking the digital tools to communities, to schools, to individuals. Um, so this is our homepage, and what you'll see um, straight away at the top is it, it's map-based. So you have a facility to explore the map, to pin your photos, but this is um, a, a newly relaunched um, homepage a few months ago. The project's been running for about a year with the full site and a year before that in beta testing. Um, but up at the top, you've got map, tours and collections, channels, and then community. And I haven't got those pages here, the community side, but on those are a lot of resources for schools, downloadable resources, activities people can do to also engage with History Pin. So I'll just take you through the site quickly for those of you who haven't seen it. Um, this is the map view, um, and each of the pink pins represents a photo and a story. Um, and it's based on Google Maps, so you can pin your history to the exact place where it happened. Um, and there's a timeline at the top, so you can also date it. So you can search this map by date, by place, and also by keyword. Um, when you click on a photo, um, you get this interface. And this is the photo. So this was uploaded by Aussie1957. This will be his account. Um, and this is from uh, Reading. And this was, um, you can look at the story here. Oh, for once, we can actually see the stories, which is great on this big screen. So in April 1947, a heavy rainfall, which resulted in the River Thames breaking its bank and flooding the surrounding area in Caversham. And so this was a story about um, his grandfather's boat, and he wanted to pin it on here. And if you look in the corner, you can see a little street view icon, because what you can also do on History Pin is you can street view your photo, so that you can see it in exactly the location it was, and you can fade in and out, so you can have a really good comparison of then and now. So this is one taken in San Francisco by another user, and they've street viewed that. So it's bringing place, story, location, date, all into one interface, which people really like to use. Um, you can also, if you're in Street View, you can wander around the streets. So it's this idea of looking for pieces of history, for stories, for images, um, and you can just wander and you can click on any of those and that, uh, that, that will bring up a story, a photo, an image. You can also have video, so I'll just let this play. Um, and again, you can overlay the video and we'll see it fade in and out. So that's in Rome at that spot. And that was uploaded by the Film Archive, because we also work with libraries, archives, and museums to try and get them to help us populate this site. 
and there's audio. So you can pin audio to the spot where it happened. I am speaking to you from the cabinet room at 10 Downing Street. Okay. And again, we have stories next to it. Um, and we also have, this is something which we, we, we created because we wanted to have a facility for people to string their ideas, their stories together into collections, into themes, add another narrative to it. So I'm just going to take you through tours and collections. Collections are content which get shown in a slideshow. So you can make any kind of themes. And one of the nice things about collections and tours is you can use any content on the site. So you can effectively favourite it. And then you can create your own collection. So you can have your own photos, but you can also take in photos from other people, from archives and museums, to tell the kind of visual story that you want to do. And this is something we use a lot with schools because it's a really good introductory activity. It's very simple to do, and it's something which kids can get into very easily. Um, and I'll show you a bit more. This is just a screen flow which shows you using tours and collections. So we've got some highlighted tours, highlighted collections. You can click on them. This is one which our creative director did facial hair through time because she happens to like it. Um, and when you choose them and put them into a collection, this is how it runs through. So we've used that idea of keeping things in a, in a way which people would recognise and be comfortable with, as well as some new technologies. Tours we created because you can string them together with a narrative. So tours are similar to collections, but what you'll see is when you take the tour, and you can look at them in different views, you can look at it in list view, and this is nice because it allows you to see different parts of the world where your story is jumping back and forth to. And this is the tour. And on the right-hand side, when you create the tour, you write your own narrative on the right-hand side. So you're actually telling more stories and linking together all these and, and explaining why you've made these links. And all the features available in uh, the normal interface are available here. So you can put audio, you can, you can use anything which is on the map, and you can use it for thank your tour. You, thank you, thank you. I'd like to carry on with something that's very old indeed. And this one was recorded in 1959. So that's Beatles. And then more photos with stories. And as I say, this narrative, it's about looking and linking things together. Um, so tours are sort of another layer of storytelling on top of um, the, the general storytelling you can do within the site. These are the new channels. These we just launched a couple of months ago. Um, you used to have a user profile, which was much more simple. Um, but we built this, um, a lot of it based on community feedback, community being online community, but also people I worked with um, in frontline projects. Um, and so on this, you've got a lot more feedback. So you can make your own channel. You can um, put your whatever photos you want. You can have banners. Um, this is all bespoke, which, which you can just upload through the site. You can you choose your colors. Um, it also gives you an idea of who's looked at your channel, how many fans you have, how many pins you have, tours and collections. So you get a, f a bit of feedback about how people are, are looking at your stories, which is really important because, as we're saying, this is about sharing and about celebrating um, stories and about celebrating memories. Um, I'll just show you the last screen flow we've got here. Um, this is another channel. This just shows you some of the bits at the bottom. So we've also built a story feed. And this is so that you can go into the different photos on the story feed, um, but you can also see if people have commented on your story. You can add more stories to other people's stories. Um, this is a really interesting story, which is um, on a Mirapix photo. Um, and it's one where we're trying to, with, with a lot of the archives, we're trying to get more information from the community about them, as well as using their archive photos. The section you're seeing now is History Pin Repeats. And this is so that if you have a modern photo or you, you have a photo which of, a, of something which has already been taken or you want to take a modern replica, you can overlay it on the photo already on the site. So again, it's building up layers and layers of images and stories and memories. Um, and that's the kind of channel that we've got at the moment. This is the interface for pinning photos. So it's, it's quite simple. To, to get onto History Pin, you simply set up an account and then you can add as many photos and stories as you like. Um, and when you go in, you'll add your photo, and then you'll put a title. You put the story. So we have a big story box, and we really encourage people to put stories. It can be as short as long as you like. You can literally put the name again. We are trying to encourage people to write as much as they can in the story box, but they don't have to. Keywords. And then what we've recently introduced is the idea that you don't um, have to put this on the map straight away. So to get it to appear on the map, you have to have the location and a vague date. But you can also upload a lot of stuff 
start to share, tell the story. You might want to go and ask somebody about it. You might want to ask your neighbour, your grandmother, your grandfather about the story. So it's, it's a way of making it easier to collaborate around images and stories which are collected. And then once you're ready to put it onto the map, then you can put it onto the map and it will be seen on History Pin. But it will always be seen on your channel whether or not you've put it onto the map. And then you, you go to the, it takes you to this, which says pin photos, locate on the map. You can either drop it into the right place, or if you know where it is, you can put the coordinates in, um, and it will do with latitude and longitude. Um, you can also move it around manually. And if you know exactly where it is, and it was from the street, you can street view it. So you can tick, yes, I know where it is from the street. And then you can literally go in and place it, and you can move it around manually, because we wanted to make it easy. So people can see it, and they can line it up with the buildings um, and put the street view in and then your photo is street viewed. So that's the basic tools on the site. Um, we also created an app which is free to download, um, and we, we try to make as many of the tools as we can free, because the idea is that other community projects, schools, organisations can all use these interfaces and run their own projects with them, um, because we've built them to try and um, meet that kind of need. So this is an app, and it's on iPhone, and um, it's on Android. And you can explore the location you're at, so you can just look around, uh, see what's there. You can post a photo through this, so you can take a photo and it gets directly uploaded onto the site. You can also digitise your own photos with it. Um, and you can just explore some of the collections if you're not next to any internet. And so it looks a bit similar to the uh, site on the map. Uh, this is how the story looks, and it encourages you to take a modern replica, so you can take one, it will go straight onto the repeat section. And then you can look around your streets in augmented reality view. So if you're in an area which has a lot of images in it, you can literally walk around the street and look at it through your phone, and you can see through the phone where the images are. You can click on it. You can get the story. Um, and you can take, again, a modern replica of it. So um, you can overlay it on the exact spot. And this, this is something which people have really enjoyed doing, and they can do it anywhere that there's content. And if there isn't content, we are encouraging everybody to add it. Um, because we need people to populate this site with as much as they can. Uh, and we're working towards getting lots of the other features. We don't have all the features on the app yet, but we're constantly trying to update it. So, uh, moving on from the kind of technical side of the site and how it works to some of the photos and stories. This is um, a photo which has a lovely story next to it. And I've, I've got a few different types of photos just to show you the different uses we use in the community, different kinds of storytelling you can use through using HistoryPin and this kind of digital platform. Um, and this is from an individual. So a lot of people will just start up their own accounts because they want to share their own history. Um, and they want to show you where it is. So they've street viewed their photo. And they've told a story about when they bought their um, motorbike and they talk about their cars. And, and it's, it's all these ideas about him. And obviously very proud of this photo and wanted to share it with the world. And we have um, a big, big community on History Pin. We've, we push things out through social networking. We do favorites, pinners of the week, all these kind of things. And we get about 500,000 visitors a month on it. So people feel like their stories are really being shared um, and that they're part of this big community of sharing stories. Uh, this is one from Fortaguado in Wales. This is one of my favourite photos, I think, because of the colours. And it's just a very simple story. And it just says, I remember coming here in the 1960s when the petrol used to be pumped by hand. Sid also delivered milk in the village. And I just think it's a really lovely image. And it's in a very small town. Um, but this has been a memory which was really important to this person to put up on the site and share. And they've street viewed this as well, um, and it looks quite different. And sometimes people don't street view it quite accurately, so, but it doesn't matter. <laughs> this is another one, this is an interesting one, because this is the intergenerational side working. So as well as running projects ourselves, we've tried to build um, History Pin so that it has behaviours built into it, so that by using it, you will automatically be encouraged to have more intergenerational conversations and interactions. And this is an example of this in action. So this person had to talk to somebody, grandmother or mother, to find out about this photo and pin it on the site. And this is a photo about their grandparents in the 1920s in Minnesota. And they're talking about the school and they're talking about the um, two ladies in the photo. Um, and this is just this really interesting interplay between um, generations talking, conversations, putting it out on a digital thing. I think it's a beautiful image. Um, and this um, person's uploaded about 10 or 12 different images, mainly based around her family history. This is another one um, from, I think it's Blaine and Gwent. I don't somebody how to pronounce that. Um, and this is another one where we had um, somebody asking, so I asked my mom. 
um, about this photo. They've the family moved. I think it's because there's a separate kitchen. So again, what's really nice is you can see the interaction happening as well as the story. You can see that this was a conversation and it was something which was started because the younger person probably got excited about history and wanted to share. And to share, they found it that they needed to go and speak to an older person about it and find out more about photos and stories. So one of the things I wanted to talk about as well was um, one of the big projects we ran in Reading. So as well as having this out there so that anybody can use it, we ran a big, big pilot project in Reading, which was called Pinning Reading's History. Um, and this was to get the whole town, as many people in the whole town involved, in mapping and pinning their own history and stories. Um, and this finished in December 2012, and this is the map of the centre of Reading. And they've, we've got now on this site 4,000 photos and stories from Reading, all donated by the community, some of the archives, some of the libraries. And every single one of these, these, these numbers are clusters of pins, so in the centre you have more. But what was really nice about the Reading project is we did this with community workers and we got volunteers in. Um, and I had a team down there working on the ground on the project. So we were able to get people all over Reading involved in this project. And the way this worked was this idea that it's, it's about bringing people together. So we've got volunteers. So the three people at the back are actually a group of intergenerational volunteers who were recruited. And everyone else in this group are um, people who came in and wanted to share their stories. And so we had the project lasted for a year, probably about six months of massive activity, where we just have drop-ins. We did an exhibition at the museum. This is the exhibition we curated. Um, and this was just one member of the community who came in. And people became regulars, and they started coming every week to the Friday drop-ins to share their stories. And then the volunteers, as well as having the offline sessions, would help people put them on site. So this is Peter, one of our regular volunteers, um, and Sheila, who basically became one of our best digital storytellers. Um, she, to begin with, would let Peter put all the stories on. Then she started learning about how to use the technology. She still now is, is a member of what... Uh, they've set up a group called Fen Friends of History Pin Reading. So we have about 20 or 30 people who are still running the project now, even though we've finished down there. And Sheila's one of the members of the group, as is Peter. And so they're all working together to keep this storytelling alive and the, the ability to put the, the photos and memories up there. Um, and I think it, one of this is to illustrate some of the lovely things that can happen when you do this kind of storytelling, image-based storytelling. This was a community centre where we um, did some work in Reading, um, and one of the residents brought in this photo, and this was a relative of hers, and she knew very little about it. And they spent a long time trying to figure out a bit more about the history of this photo. And one of the volunteers went off and did a load of research and actually managed to find and identify that he works in one of the London boroughs and found his, um, which police station he worked for by looking at the badge number and was able to build up the history she didn't know, which is now a story she can tell and is something which she can put on the site. So I think it's really interesting because a, a lot of history pin and a lot of digital storytelling is about capturing stories which wouldn't otherwise be told, but also finding stories out for people who might not even know them themselves, and it gives them a reason and an impetus to do this um, because it's an exciting project to be part of. We worked in care homes. We're, we're looking at working a bit more in reminiscence if we can because we think it's a really good way of um, working with that and sharing stories with the world around that. Um, and we worked in the classroom. And again, this is another one. I've chosen this story because this was a young, um, young person who put this story up, this photo, which they'd gone home. We got them to go home and bring photos into the classroom sessions. And then we have a section which says, add your voice. And the idea of this is we want to build layer upon layer of stories. So somebody in the community just spotted that on the website, and they've added their story to it. And it's a lady who was born down the road who used to know the two people in the photo. So she's added another sort of layer of storytelling to this, to this picture. Um, and then you can do all sorts of things with it. We've got a guided walk, which the volunteers did. They didn't use the app for this, um, but they're going to develop it into an app tool. Um, and we put some volunteers into the Reading Post, into archives, and they discovered a photo which nobody had found and digitised it. And there's a whole community now looking at this photo of Reading Football Club in 1966 and trying to find more and more stories. They're doing it through social networking. So again, lots of different ways of using storytelling, finding out stories. And that's the History Pin exhibition. Lots of old and young people in the community came together. And again, I guess a lot of this is about looking at this mixture of online and offline. And for us, it's really important to have both because a lot of the communities we work with, a lot of the people we work with, they won't necessarily have access to the digital technology. They may not have used it before. Um, and it's about combining offline and online to create an online storytelling site that includes everyone's stories. 
Um, so this was a, a guy called Bob who ended up contributing thousands of photos and stories, only three or four of which came onto the site because he um, wanted to do a huge project, but he's still in the friends group and slowly we're going to be building up his entire family history through this project. Um, so sometimes it might be one story you get, sometimes it might be 20. It, it doesn't really matter um, as long as there's an impetus to do it. And these are just more photos of the volunteers, people working together in the museum. Um, and we did a full evaluation on this because this was a funded project um, by Heritage Lottery and the Kaluska Benkian Foundation. And what was really interesting was what came out about the effects on intergenerational relationships, big increase in people working together, in feeling part of their community. Um, and the one at the top, which you may not be able to read, but I really like this quote, which is um, of somebody saying... Um, how interesting the people are and um, once they got past the oh I've got to listen to this old guy they started to find out some really nice stories so lo lots of things like that which which happened and, and this, this is on our website which you can look at um, and the number of dots are the same in, in the circle as the number which I have to point out because our graphic designer spent hours trying to get the right number of dots and is very pleased with people noticing that um, this is another, this is a, I've put this one in because this is a, a much smaller scale project. This was one which I ran when I first got to History Pin about a year ago, which was just with a local group in Tower Hamlets, um, and it was a photography group at the local community centre, um, and we just did a workshop with younger and older people talking about photos and memories, and we did three sessions, uh, and learned all about these things. A lot of these people um, were absolutely lovely in their 80s, um, Many of them have huge amounts of stories to tell about East End London, but didn't really have any, any way to share them, and got very excited about the project. Some of them didn't want to do the computing, um, but by the end of it, were very pleased that they'd done it. Um, and this is a lovely story by Vincent, who was in that photo there, and this was um, about when he was doing national service, and he's looking back over his memories, sharing, it, sharing the story with us, putting it on the site. Uh, this was, we took them to computer rooms, and we did all the storytelling here. And this is by Barry. This is a really interesting one because Barry absolutely loved doing this. And this was when Barry was uh, a taxi driver and he got to ferry a load of models all the way from um, London to France. Um, and he just became obsessed with the History Pin as a project where he could share this and he street viewed it and he worked with a young guy. Um, there's his street view of it on Tower Bridge. I mean, it's the most amazing image. Um, worked with this young guy, Freddie, on it, um, kept in touch, kept on doing work on it, and we actually went back to see them because um, we got asked to do something by Radio 4. So we, we chose this group, and so Barry got to tell all his stories on Radio 4, and so we had a whole digital storytelling session, put up the photos they'd shared before and looked at sharing more photos and then telling their stories through radio. Um, and it was a really powerful, powerful session. The other thing I wanted to show you very quickly um, was... Uh, Th those are more direct delivery projects. We also build tools and just work with History Pin to let anyone do anything they want with it. Um, so this was a, a school in Canada, um, Nelson Rural School, and I ended up getting in contact with them because they wanted me to do a couple of Skype sessions with their students. But they did an entire project based on History Pin where they got the students to go into the community and be archivists for their town. Um, and the, the, the project, this is their own website here, that's the kids on a Skype call. That's why they're squashed in a bit, because we we're on a screen about this big at the front. Um, but we were talking about History Pin. They were telling us all the stories. We just did a couple of hours with them, and they did an eight-week project where they discovered the history of their whole community, all the stories from the older people, and then are going to carry on doing this. And this was one of the lovely stories which they had, which is a picture of a um, man taken in 1952, and... Um, talking about the story, the store it was taken in, talking about what you smelt, all the different ideas. Um, and this was um, part of their project, a, a story and a memory that had been shared because the kids really liked using the digital technology, wanted to take that into the community, and then therefore had this massive motivation to be part of something bigger. Um, this is another one, Billericay School in Essex, where they invited a lot of um, people from the local community, older men from the local community, to come and work with a group of boys who had um, traditionally found it harder to socialise. Um, and um, it was about developing social skills. And they arranged the entire session themselves. They invited them in. They did a film about it. They put all their stories on History Pin. And it turned into a, a massive community project. And this is one in Spain, where an English school um, out there wanted to get people to feel part of um, the community they were living in, because a number of people were coming from overseas. So they got the local community to come in and bring photos and stories, and the kids, um, again, took the photos, the stories, recorded them, put them up onto History Pin, publicised it through the site. 
So I think I think the idea behind that is it's 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 really important as everybody's been saying that this this bridging the gap between storytelling in the community, preserving it, but also trying to create something which we've seen with, with everything we've seen today where it looks, it looks lovely, it looks fun, it looks engaging. People want to do it because it's exciting and fun. So people don't come to History Pin because they know all this background. They come to History Pin because they really like it and they like the interface and it's easy to use and they feel like it's getting to a massive global audience. And that's why they use it. All these benefits are built in. Um, and if you, can, it, you know, if you can do something, we've been really lucky that, that that's been something which people have started to take up and we're hoping that that's gonna continue. And we're working with people all over the world to do this. And another thing uh, about History Pin is that the whole idea of what we do is collaboration. We try and put as much as we can out there free so people can use it. Um, we do challenges which this one was done um, just quite timely. This was done with the Jubilee, so we did this challenge with the Palace. We just pitched it to them, and they liked it, which was great. Um, so we've done a, a Jubilee visit. So all across the Commonwealth, people have been uploading photos of when they've been somewhere with the Queen. Um, and so we've got loads of photos and stories and memories, and that celebrated the Jubilee. Um, and very luckily, we got Prince uh, William put one up the other day, which meant our spike from views went up to like 12,000 in an hour, which was great. Um, but all these kind of projects, you know, from small community groups to amazing projects going all over the world. I know that People's Collection in Wales, they're doing some amazing work. And what we're looking for is how we can collaborate and link in with absolutely anybody who is promoting storytelling, um, sharing information. And what we've done with the um, channels is we've um, made them embeddable on websites. So, and this is especially good for small groups, small community groups, archives. You can literally get your own channel, your own account, and you can embed the code into your site, and then you will have mini history pin with all your content on your own site. So if you were doing a project, a community project, or a school project with one class, you can have that interface where you can zoom around your content and use all our functionality, but embedded into your own site. And as I say, for us, so much of this is about trying to share and make everybody in the world look at digital storytelling. Very quickly, because um, I'm aware of the time, this is just um, a little bit on crowdsourcing. This was a project, a little thing which, which Brooklyn Museum did with us, um, where they just built a little crowdsourcing thing, put 300 photos out, asked the community to find out where they were, tell stories about it, and they got um, 300 photos. Um, with more information, which are now pinned on History Pin under the Brooklyn Museum channel. They wouldn't have had that information without the community there. It's about inviting people in, thinking of ways of doing that. This is another one in Reading. This was an archive. This was a lovely one. This was a lady whose husband had sadly died about five years before, and um, she decided to donate all his collection of brickwork to our project in Reading, brought them all in, we uploaded them, and we actually put it out onto the Reading Forum and asked people to identify where this brickwork was. And she came to the exhibition when we launched it and was a, a, a big player in that. And I think we've been talking about how this makes people feel. For her, it was a massive thing. This archive was commemorating her husband. She got to meet hundreds of people who thought that what she'd done was absolutely amazing. Um, she didn't go online and post the photos, but young volunteers helped her do it. And it was, it was this, this way of bringing sort of communities together around photos, stories, and images that's so important. Um, and I'm going to whiz through that, because that's our blogger. That's just a list. We work with lots of our libraries, archives, and museums as well, about 350 at the moment, um, with US National Archives and um, Imperial War Museum, etc. We're just trying to open up their collections. A lot of museums and archives want to um, bring people in to their work and allow people to see <coughs> excuse me, it's here and allow people to interact with it and it's a really good way of doing that. And then this is just interesting things people were doing. So people had worked with History Pin and they decided to project San Francisco on the bus shelters. So they've got these um, slides which are now on bus shelters, a way of opening up collections. And, and all of this is really just to say that, um, you know, it's amazing. You run your own projects, you, you give it out for people to do and people do the most amazing things with it. And I think that's the other thing to emphasize is that you don't, we don't mind what people do as long as we moderate things which are inappropriate. But apart from that, we want people to use this in any way they can. And I'm just ending on, this is a picture of Cardiff, Pancake Day in Cardiff, which I thought was a nice place to end. So, um, sorry, I went a bit quickly. I didn't want to go over time, but, um, but that's it.